Jesus. Now, this is something I've only shared with people close in my circle. But the being that we have come to know or understand or understand as Jesus, I remember interacting with the original. Now, listen closely. The original prophet, or some of you guys will say the Messiah. I remember him. I remember being in his presence. He did not go by the name of Jesus. I think most of us already know that. There was no being who walked the earth who went by the name of Jesus 2,000 years ago. But there was someone who went by the name of Joshua, Yahushua. You guys pronounce it differently, but within the context of this conversation, that being is and was real. I remember him, I interacted with him, and you guys will be surprised at how humble not just that being is or was, but the others who followed behind him. Now here's where I'm going. Jesus, the name Jesus, is a created archetype of those who have come before. There's the story of Krishna. You will see the similarities between the story of Jesus and Krishna, uh, Zeus, and all these different characters or these beings who have been documented as existing before. But I'm going to stick with Yahshua or Yeshua or Yahushua because that's the one I remember. That's the one I have full conscious memory of interacting with. Yes, that was, he was a melanated or living the life of a melanated man. Many of us have the habit of disregarding tons and tons of information because either you find a flaw in the doctrine or information or you find that the messenger is someone that you don't like or you have a problem with. This is so erroneous because I'm going to keep saying it. Every school of thought, everyone has a piece of the puzzle. The key is remaining one with an open mind and using discernment and take what resonates and leave the rest behind. So, Yeshua or Yahushua really existed. Now, he was but one who came to earth to bring forth higher level knowledge to teach or to remind those who have lost their way. Now, this is where the archetype of Jesus has kind of convoluted what all of this is really about. And I'm going to break it down and again take what resonates and leave the rest behind. First of all, there's a lot of play on words and this is very key. Instead of using the S-O-N of God, what you do is you change it from S-O-N to S-U-N-S. -S. The S-U-N-S -S of God or the Almighty came into the world. Now, this changed the entire meaning because now it's telling you that instead of tying such a important role to one time in history and one being, you will see how this can be found, the mission and everything that Jesus stood for, or the original prophet or Messiah, so to speak, stood for, was replicated and repeated and it's still existing now. So think of what Jesus, what he stood for. He was against corruption and the mistreatment of the little people. He was about elevating the mind consciousness. And 
there are many other things that he did and what he stood for. Apply that. Then when it says he died for the sins, no, not for the sins of humanity or mankind, but because of the sins of humanity and mankind. You see how flipping in the words and again, reading with discernment where your higher mind will correctly interpret the original meaning and keep it in its proper context. So Jesus was a created archetype and associated with one image, one type of uh, look. Now, you guys say, oh, what he looked like doesn't matter. Truthfully, it doesn't. But obviously, someone wanted to paint a picture and an idea of Jesus with a totally different name from what all of these beings who identified or who were the archetypes or who fit the archetypes of what we call Jesus. Someone obviously wants to paint a different picture for a reason. But again, even in that, if we are using discernment, we can see through that. When Jesus was created, it was a title of designation given to one who was or carried on the same legacy, the same mission and same purpose as the original prophet, teacher or Messiah that we all commonly know as Joshua. Now you guys may say the name doesn't matter, but there is power in the name. It does matter because when you are calling on a being or anyone, you call them by the name that they respond to, even in the afterlife or what we call the afterlife. So, from that perspective, Jesus really does ex exist, but as a archetype or a, um, as a house or umbrella of those who embody the Christ and everything that the original Messiah stood for. Now, there's a difference between Jesus and Christ. Christ, it's miles and miles and miles and miles of bandwidth and energy that vibrates so high and is so clean and so pure that in order to be one with that energy, we have to elevate our mind, body, and core at a frequency to match it. So when the son of God, S-U-N, came to earth, he already had that frequency and that energy he was already one with the Christ. This is how and why he was able to bring in information and knowledge and even channel knowledge and information that was not easily available or widely known by those who are on earth who are lost and still under the veil of, of amnesia. 2,000 years from now, we will know of more names who will fall under the category of, of a Jesus-like being or one who was like a Christ being. There have been many who have come and who have died, sacrificed their lives for the betterment or greater whole, going against the machine or going against the system. And there will be many more. There have been many who had the gift of prophecy, who brought knowledge and keys to share to the people to help them unlock the Christ within and raise their consciousness and become one with the Christ. And there will be others in other timelines and so on until infinity. Because this is a natural cycle. This is something that has always happened. So within that context, there are many Jesuses. There are many Christs. There's a collective body of Christ. Within that context, just as the original is humble, even in all of his mightiness, those who are truly sons of God, meaning they didn't have to come here. Their sacrifice started before they even came here in the physical body because they're vibrating on a realm, one with the source or the sun, so to speak, the source of all life. The sun is a living being. It is the source of life and eternal life as well because the sun is consciousness. It is alive. The organic light that emanates from the sun, that is consciousness. Water is in between light. Organic light has a wetness to it. Everything that has water, wherever you see water, there's consciousness. Now, some people may say, well, the sun's burning out. 
That's only from the perspective of the limited human mind and the brain decoding. What is really happening when the sun burn out is that it vibrates so high at such a level, it appears to burn out. But no, that collective consciousness and that collective energy has just simply shifted to another vibration. And what is left is the shell of itself. Now, let me tell you guys something else. Now, remember, I'm speaking within the umbrella. The real Jesus never demanded worship, never demanded people to follow him. But when we follow his teachings, you have to take the knowledge and then you have to apply it to yourself and then you become one with the Christ. So no, the original true Messiah does not require or demand worship and for people to follow him. That's ego. That's the program of egotism. We're talking about beings who have transcended that. We're talking about beings who manifest higher God level energy in the flesh. The key again, guys, is being open to all forms of knowledge, having an open mind, but learning how to properly discern what you receive. Stop throwing away the baby with the bathwater. That's the trap. That's the mistake. And anybody, anybody, male, female, any race, gender, ethnicity, who is one with the Christ consciousness can represent a body of Christ. All right, that's all I want to share with you guys. Continue to question, learn, and grow, and stay tuned for the next one, all right? Peace. <laughs>